What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 4 of my Total War Warhammer 2 modded Vlad campaign. So as we saw last time, rather than proceeding into the Empire, we instead went east into the mountains and have taken Karakadrin and Nashrak's lair as well. Uh, Kazid Irkalas unfortunately does belong to the Red Eye, who we are, well, not allied with, but non-aggressing with. But if they lose it, uh, for example, to Ostermark, although wait, they're not at war, uh, who are they even at war? War with. I swear they used to have two settlements. Oh, they're at war with Kislev and the, La the Lamians and, well, Karakadrin. Hmm, well, the fact that they're at war with the Lamians might be a good thing, uh, because I re yeah, they're not gonna break through this garrison, that's for damn sure, so these guys might eventually get a big enough army out here to, uh, uh to take that out, maybe we can confederate and take them both, that would be nice. Uh, and, oh yeah, these guys love us, because, go figure, oh, but they don't really appreciate the, uh, the treaties with all the various orcs, huh? <laughs> oh well, it is what it is. Uh, otherwise, we are gonna sit here in Nashrax there, and, ooh, Vlad leveled up, but we're not actually gonna use the point, because we're saving for all the good stuff stuff uh, here in his main uh, lord line. Uh, otherwise, I thought about it, and I think what I'm not gonna do is not attack Thorgrim and take Mount Gunbad. The reason for this is we don't have any corruption buildings here, and it would necessitate essentially sitting at Mount Gunbad and defending it, uh, because it would take so long to grow it, kind of like Zufbar and Karak Kadrin. Uh, they would both be rebelling for a while, which would be good if we had more armies, but unfortunately we don't have enough armies to do that yet, so hopefully, uh, hopefully Thorgrim just gets wrecked here uh, at Grom Peak. I would imagine he's going to attack as, as drag here, and we will probably win that. In fact, I guarantee he'll win that, but then he'll move on to Grom Peak and lose, or otherwise move back to Mount Gunbad and then keep trying that sort of thing. Uh, bordering him, although, is not a great thing because he's probably going to declare war on us and take uh, Nashrak's lair eventually, but he can vie with the orcs uh, for that while we just defend that Karakadrin and that uh, Zufbar. I think these are nice uh, nice points that will sort of protect Castle Drakenhof from the uh, uh, from the encroaching dwarfs. And ooh, wait, Forest of Gloom has now been destroyed by something. Oh, are the Skaven here? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, they're losing corruption. It's some kind of corruption there, and I'm willing to bet that it's the Skaven corruption. Huh. I wonder how strong this faction is now. Maybe some nice kills and uh, some nice uh, uh, dark magic out of that. Speaking of dark magic, is there anything we can afford to build right now? I don't think so. Don't think so. Looks like we just keep on uh, making uh, peasant blood taxes. The growth does hurt, but it is what it is. At least we're, we're still growing to a degree. Alrighty, now we're gonna skip the points, we're gonna skip the rebellion, because we're gonna hopefully move back there and defend it. Now the question is whether we get another uh, quest going. You know what, I think we probably want to. Let's uh, let's get the next level of Imperial Administration right now. I want the money more than anything, just so we can upgrade the uh, the walls here, because it's only a matter of time until the Empire attacks, regardless of the diplomacy we have with them right now, especially as they don't appreciate our treaty with the uh, with the War Grove of Woe there. So yeah, let's go. Night Court once again, and we'll do the Imperials one more time. Hopefully it just... Uh, let's see. Raise or sack the following number of... Okay, that's going to be a little bit harder to achieve. But at least it's not timed, so we can essentially do this whenever we please. Alright, fine. We'll get to that. Uh, would have been helpful if we had that before attacking Nashrak Slayer, because I would have then erased, sacked it or raised it. No, no, well, too late. I didn't think about it at that time. Alright, let's end the turn. Rebellion and Peak Pass. Now, question. Will it be a Dwarven Rebellion? Because if it's a Dwarven Rebellion, that's going to be a much bigger problem than one we're currently facing. Ooh, underway interception. And it's a... Uh, it looks like a decisive victory. Once again, it's just some minor stuff. I think we could just auto-resolve this. So there's no need to watch these guys all die. Uh, Garagrim Iron Fist. Yeah, no, he has no armor. They're, they'd all get wrecked. Oh, wow, the bats even barely got hurt. Ouch. Ouch. A leadership, but I think we'll take the money once again. Uh, we are always hurting for money at this stage in the game, so we might as well uh, use it. I'm actually surprised that this faction didn't suicide on Nashrak's lair here, as they would normally. And let's see what else we have here. Oh, 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 it is an Orc Rebellion. Oh, that's perfect. If it's an Orc Rebellion, I'm not concerned at all. Uh, preparation versus War Fervor. Well, War Fervor would help our defenders, and I don't see us raising dead in the next five turns, so I think it's good uh, that we'll go for... A, it shall be Yash. What is this, by the way? Some malignant thing dares to challenge you. A message sent from somewhere in the Grey Mountains warns you to stay away and keep to your Sylvanian slums or face the Great Enchanter. Uh, it shall be Yash. No thing living or dead should you dare challenge us. 
There you go. And fire resistance for Isabella Swell, I guess. Uh, rating in Nashrax Lair, that's fine. Rating in Zephbar, that's fine. Yeah, so all these... Oh, this army's getting stronger. Ah, oh, man, do we summon another Lord just for the defense of this? Because I don't think... Yeah, see, this is the annoying thing. You can't get here unless you go around. And we could try to go around. Oh, I should have probably gone around last turn, because I think next turn he's most likely going to attack Zephar, and it's not going to be able to defend itself. I guess it depends on what's in here. Uh, the army is still suffering attrition, though. You know what? Let's try this. You're going to move here. Let's pray that the Skaven don't get upset about doing this. We will suffer attrition ourselves, but it is what it is. But I don't think this army can attack us. Alrighty. Now this is uh, this is tempting the Skaven. I learned in my I think it was the uh, the Thoric campaign that AI seems to be tempted when you send a lord out th like this, like an easy target, to declare war on you just to kill that lord. Uh, same thing that we generally see rogue armies doing. Uh, so it's definitely possible. Uh, alrighty, well, Vlad, you're gonna attack this guy. Keep leveling. You're almost at your uh, your good skills and is this guy gonna run down there yeah he's gonna run down there isn't he i should have actually played the battle to kill him for good all right that's fine that's fine you're gonna go here then gonna kill this and out of resolve i mean it's all free levels in xp right and once again all right correct kadrin destroy beautiful and beautiful well when we download the mod for the uh uh, for the recruit legendary, defeated legendary lords, that'll fix itself. Okay, so it looks like Thorak is stat not Thorak. Yeah, I said Thorak, and then I got Thorak on my mind. Uh, Thor Grim is here, right outside Grom Peak. This is still problematic. Uh, you can't move this turn. Okay, so here's what we do: we send Isabella back here to correct Kadrin, fast as she can go. Uh, Vlad, in the meantime, is gonna quickly. Oh, he can't even. Okay, fine. You're gonna stay here, Vlad. You're gonna grab the Ogre Mercenaries next turn, then you're gonna proceed away from here. We don't care about Nashrak's lair. Uh, we just don't care. In fact, it might have actually been better to raise it. Hmm. I thought there was an option to get rid of settlements completely now. Is, th is that not the case? Click to abandon the settlement on the next turn. This will generate 360 income. Now, this place is currently giving us 150 money per turn, 176 money per turn. Uh, considering we're only getting, that's like half of the positive income we're gaining, maybe we leave it for a couple turns, then we abandon it while, uh, while Thorgrim is here. Although he is fairly weak, he's not gonna be able to take this. Hmm. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we're better off going after the Skaven here. Ooh, and the Skaven lost to the uh, the dwarves out here. Oh man, another dwarven faction. <laughs> I would try to destroy the dwarves, and they just keep popping up out of the ground. Ah oh, man. Alrighty, Waldenhof, you already have your peasant blood tax. You're about to get your peasant blood tax. We can upgrade the walls of uh, Schwarzhofen here. Just looking for any other places with peasant blood tax available, but it doesn't look like there's anyone there. Man, this is a lot of cash, but I think we have no choice. Let's uh, let's get that Graveguard Watchtower. Really don't want to lose these settlements, and we need to we need to surround ourselves, fortify everything. Alrighty, and ooh, hello. Who do we have here? What? Oh, okay, okay. For a second, I thought that the that the uh, the colors of Clan Ferric look kind of similar to Clan Moors, and I was like, wait, 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 did they get confederated? Uh, what? Apparently not the case. Alrighty, Vlad's level ten now, so this will unlock in a few turns, so that'll be nice. I would love to get Lord Master of Vampires, and uh, well, obviously Wind of Death and all this stuff, but once again, uh, this has got to take priority. And also, what does the capture Beckhoff and well, we'll do that eventually. Oh man, really? All this way? Okay, well, we have to do that eventually, so diplomacy is not going to work for capturing something when that's part of our quest. Isabella also has to save points. You know what? Let's just save everybody's points for now. Ignore the unassigned skill points. End the turn. Uh, let's see about these guys. Might have to defend uh, both of these settlements. Uh, if this guy moves in, then, of course, our uh, uh, Isabella's cousin is going to have to move back to Castle Drakenhof. But if they keep saving, we won't. Let's see. Where are those rebellions? Will they do it? They know we're coming to Zephbar. 
Ah, yeah, they did that one turn. They one turn. All right, fine. Annoying, but it is what it is. Ooh, chaos corruption for some dark magic. We'll take the uh, we'll take the dark magic. Screw the chaos uh, corruption. It's not gonna make a big difference. Go back to Castle Drake and Hop, please. Ignore all this, and we'll just hope that the defense of this is successful. Uh, the Lord is very badly hurt, so we can definitely badly damage their morale with this. And oh, their army is also building up here. Is the garrison at least full here? Oh, it's so it's only halved. Oh man. Okay. Well, that's not so great. Uh, Isabella, walk up to here, and let's just hope that they don't attack next turn, although I do expect that they might. Ooh, are you going after the dwarfs here? They might all be going for th for Thorgrim and Mount Gunbad. Yeah, look at them. <laughs> or maybe they're chasing Khalid al here. Uh, well, I guess we'll figure that out. Let's see, you, Vlad, move in here. Grab those ogre mercenaries. Not that we really need them uh, right now. Uh, considering you're not a Salan, you're gonna get the Mornfang Cavalry, which I find are probably the only useful ogres to hire. Unless you have a slan. The uh, ogre army, I'm in an ogre, ogre army under a slan in the Maz the Mundi campaign. It has been incredibly useful, but too bad the vampires don't have red traits that buff everybody in the army. Yeah, that's a shame. That is a shame. Wait, what happens? Wait. What happens if... Can, can ogres be turned into vampires or are they resistant to it? That's a, that's a frightening thought. They're already very hungry. <laughs> oh man. Or would they not even notice? Uh, maybe their own hunger is even worse than the vampire's hunger in the first place. Huh. Oh, now I gotta read about this. Uh, okay. Okay, let's see. Uh, skip this, skip this, skip this. And before somebody says, well, no vampire would uh, uh, go in for turning an ogre, I I, I point to the, uh, uh, to the Strigoi, so yeah. They've fallen pretty far. Uh, let's see, what can we get here that's worth our cash? Ooh, Castle Dragonhof is going to be ready to upgrade in two turns, so we just got to make sure that we have enough money for that upgrade at that point. Waldenhof, I do think we should probably get that corpse pile here right now. Yeah. It hurts in terms of our cash, but it's sort of... Ooh, yes, more peasant blood tax. Can never get enough of that peasant blood tax. You already have walls, even though your garrison is going to be trash. Hopefully, we can just defend you with a uh, with an army rather than having to deal with you the old-fashioned way. Uh, otherwise, I guess that's another end turn. And there's no settlement to raise or sack, but it should we should have a couple of uh, defensive battles right about now. And this is allowing us to grow our empire a little bit. And let's see, Karaz the correct. I just want to see, okay, Grom Peak, no, 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 I want to see who owns Mount Squidcorn. Can't quite tell. Owner unknown. Well, it's not really helpful, is it, now? Well, I mean, Sisterhood's still doing something out there. Aha, you're going to attack. Uh, that's not so good, but I'm re oh, you have the uh, Goblin Rock Lobbers here, right? Eh? Uh, well, let's see how this works out. I mean, I suppose if the, ah, oh, if we lose this... Wait, does it even cost us anything if we lose it? Because this settlement was still level 1 and we didn't actually build anything here. Uh, so maybe it doesn't even matter. Just farm the rebellions and rebuild it even if it dies. Alrighty, well that's fine. The, oh, they got towers instead of rams this time. That's much worse. That is much, much worse. Okie dokie. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna get the bats, we're gonna send them forward to fight that... Uh, that catapult, although now that I think about it, those uh, spider riders are probably all surrounding it, uh, which is kind of a shame. But they appear to have no ram whatsoever. That's kind of interesting. Alrighty, so what do we have here? Goblins, goblins, and night goblins, night goblins. Okay, I guess you two are going to be here to defend this. I'm going to keep you to help out against those night goblins. Ooh, or do we keep our bats back? It's also hard to say. Alrighty, well, zombies, you're going to defend here. All of you, I guess. Oh, now we need one of our zombies to go here to make sure that these towers are actually firing. Alrighty, well, that's all we got for now. Let's make you guys group two. Let's make you group one because uh, we have to keep you alive. Start battle and get to it. You guys, turn off guard mode, please. All right, towers all attack the same. Night Gobbo Tower right there. Unfortunately, our towers can't reach the... Uh, uh, can't reach the catapults, but that's what the bats are for. And aha, uh -huh, there the spider. Oh, and they are archers. Damn, that's not good. They're probably gonna charge our bats as well. Uh, all right, well, let's get behind this catapult unit. Hopefully we can at least make it route before the bats all die. You know what? I feel like we should preserve at least one of the bad units. You go back. Because uh, they're gonna be very useful on top of the walls, after all. And bats do this now. All right, how are those towers looking? All right, one tower on each side will die. Oh, our poor bats. I should have been doing the dance. 
when these guys get their volleys in there. Alright, get back there. And these guys aren't charging to protect their catapults. Okay, so that's that's going in our favor. That's for damn sure. Oh, this poor back unit is probably going to be dead. Enemy siege equipment has fallen. Uh, this one's going to remain alive, but there's not much we can do about that. Are they going to try to break through the gate? Well, I don't see how they would. Uh, oh, this poor back unit is going to melt. It's going to melt, but so is their catapult unit. So bats just paid for themselves right there. Uh, you guys, I'll start taking these error boys since you can't kill that tower. Uh, you guys, kill the spider riders. And you guys can't really kill anything else, can you? Other than the tower, and you're not going to bring it down. Alrighty, well, it's time to slowly be killing uh, lots and lots of spider riders there. Uh, how are you guys doing? Alright, goblin rock lobbers. Just make sure that they cu they can't come back. Alright, you two are doing a reasonably good job at uh, hurting the archers. Alrighty. All these little sieges are kind of funny, but hey, at least they give us free uh, dark energy or whatever. And, oh, you're actually attacking the uh, gate here. Okay, we need to send our lord to protect the gate, and I think we need to tell all of our towers to now attack. Wow, they're actually bringing it down reasonably fast. Don't appreciate that. As soon as those error boys are out... Okay, okay, you zombos are gonna move in here to help. Uh, yeah, this should be good. Maybe do this. You need to guard the gate. And you guys, ooh, move right there to defend all this. Wait, wait, you stay here. I think one should take care of them. I mean, they are just zombies after all. Alright, come on, how's that gate looking now? Actually surprised this army hasn't around. Okay, you need to come back. I think you're gonna need to help here. Uh, let's have you guys... Okay, there we go. The error boys are done for. Everybody switch to attacking the spider riders. We do have another... Uh, Unit that can attack that. What's your damage? 23%, eh? Oh, there is a there is a lord out there. I didn't even realize. Alrighty, well, you move in, try to attack those night gabos. And you're still alive, but mm, if you charge anything, you'll probably die. Goblins versus zombies. Uh, I take it the even gobos have better stats. Yeah, ten and five. Uh, you guys, you're just meant to hold the line here while our uh, while our towers kill the spider riders, which they're doing a pretty decent job of. Yeah. All right. Nice. Nice. All right, bats. Uh, try to at least charge the gobos. You guys, I can't send you up there. You know what? I'd really love to, but uh, you're busy. All right, bats, attack them a little bit. At least annoy them. Oh, here comes the lord. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Definitely going to be a problem. If we make the entire rest of the army route, however... Uh, okay, bats, done with that. Uh, I didn't mean to click that. I clicked the wrong button. You go right here. Alright, 36 on those spider riders. They'll break through eventually. Oh, damn it. Uh, you need to go forward and identify the enemy, uh, the other enemy spider riders. Although, yeah, there we go. Good, just stay in the center right here where you hopefully won't get uh, killed by our, your own uh, your own allied towers. You guys, you need to help those uh, zombies, unfortunately. Alright, everybody, kill those gobos and bats. You help out with that. There we go, another charge might be able to finish them off. You're attacked in flank. How do we attack you in the back? Do we have to attack from the tower side? Maybe. Alright, let's try to let's try to go from the tower side. We I want to uh, get a uh, I want to cripple its morale by attacking it in the back. Alright, you move around right there. See if that works out for you. Yeah, our skeletons are slowly getting killed here, although probably more so by the enemy boss than anything else. And are these guys spider riders, archers, or... Yeah, they are archers. So we wait until they're out of arrows, and then we sally through the gate and attack them, I think. Uh, you guys, attack those gobos, please. Let's see. Will this do it? Wavering, damage sustained. Come on, is this attacked in rear? No. How the hell do you attack it in rear? Why is this so difficult? Uh, alrighty, well, they're still not routing, they're u losing slightly, the bats are dropping the- Man, the bats are dying more than the gobos, shockingly enough. Sorry, bats. And how are we doing on this side? Not so great either, but, uh, that, uh, you know, that makes sense. Oh, well. It's okay, it's okay. These towers aren't firing anymore, so we need to get some more gobos over there. Uh, or gobos, zombies over there. You guys, I think it's time to sally out and attack those, uh, spider riders. Not much of a choice, and- Oh, and our bats are crumbling now. They took too much damage. Oh, well. Uh, aha, but the unit of Gobos is done for. You chase the units, you still fight that boss. We need to make sure that that Gobo unit does not come back. Really, really key right now, because if they uh, if they route into the city, we have nobody to deal with them. Come on. They're recovering their morale. Bats, do it. 
You got this, Bats. Yes, okay, you attack some stragglers. Uh, very, very nice. All right, you guys just keep the enemy lore distracted. Uh, how's our own lord? Fighting those spider riders. Uh, probably going to take a while. What's the damage on you? Uh, let's see. 25 melee damage versus 26. We have a slightly higher melee defense, so we should be able to kill them over time. Uh, now it's just a matter of trying to kill these uh, gobos or distract the gobos maybe better. Because if we can make the Lord route, I'm not entirely sure about it. He is surrounded. He is slowly taking damage. <laughs> These little battles are actually pretty fun. You know what? Although, uh, we're basically out of any moves, so we can just speed this up and, uh, you know, otherwise it's gonna take, like, the entire episode for them very, very slowly attacking each other. Oh, unfortunately, our towers that would attack these guys if they routed are not really, uh, not really here anymore. Gobbles are doing reasonably well here. We just need our lord to finish this up. Oh, what? They recovered? Oh, that is so dumb. That is so freaking dumb. You guys go after them now. Bats, charge them in the back again. <laughs> That's really annoying, I gotta say. I thought that they weren't able to... Uh... I thought that the bats had chased them off. That's what I thought. Oh, well, and the boss has done a reasonably good job here. Oh, he's so close to routing. If we force this unit to route, we might actually cause the entire army to route because the boss is so close. All right, night goblins are charging. So is our lord. Uh, bats charge him right in the back. There we go. Come on, route, 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 route. Before the bats die. All right, there we go. They're broken. Uh, you go back in. And I think ignore the spider riders now. Rather than attacking the spider riders. Oh, they're at 86%. It is what it is, though. You can go kill the enemy lord. It's going to be very, very close now. All right, you keep attacking. We're going to speed it back up. I shouldn't have sped it up in the first place. Oh, well. And unfortunately, the spider riders are going to break through the gate. And what they're going to do is they're going to try to capture our stuff. Uh, and our zombos aren't going to hold on much longer. All right, find that lord, please. And surround him and do the best you can. And where are the bats? All right, they saw that unit off. You could go try to charge this unit. Ooh, wait, maybe charge the lord. In the yes, lord routed. <laughs> Our lord made them round. Damn, that was close. Alrighty, in battle. Uh, we probably could have chased them and maybe shot them up a little bit, but I think Isabella can finish off this army. This is the uh, Karakadrin army, I think, not the Zufbar army, unless I'm mistaken. I kind of forgot while we were fighting that. <laughs> what a silly little fight. Let's see if we got a decent amount of money after it. I, I am hoping for at least 500 to 800. I mean, they did outnumber us after all. It is a heroic victory. But I take it the amount of money you get is based on the amount of units killed, although it probably has to do with the eliteness of the unit or something like that. Because then otherwise Skaven Slaves would be worth more than Executioners or Chosen or something like that. Alrighty, what do we get out of this? Uh, let's see. The Dead Rise again, it's a garrison we don't care. And we got ourselves 600 money from here and 700 from here. Definitely worthwhile. All right, well done, Rebellions, well done. And now Isabella can finish off that army for free XP. Are you going to now attack Zufbar? Uh, no, not yet. Okay, Servant Life or Death, Growth and Income from Repression Buildings. What are Repression Buildings? What are you? Blood Tax. That's not Repression. Boneyard. Uh, okay, that doesn't tell me anything, really. <laughs> what is a Repression Building? Balefire. Ah, Repression, here we go. Gallows and Gibbet. Uh, okay, okay. Well, that means making gallows and gibbets is more worth it. In fact, the level 2 now makes as much as a level 1 blood tax, essentially. Not quite, but basically. But it also provides more public order. Hmm. And more money without the growth penalty as well. Alright, not too bad. Uh, Isabella, finish off this, uh... What? What are you doing? Check this. I think I was clicking away or something. Uh, kill that. There we go. And more money. I know the way. All this leadership reduction does kind of hurt, I gotta admit. Uh, but it is what it is. You go into Waldenhof. We can... Go into Waldenhof. Uh, we can allow this place to rebel again. And we can ignore all this while Vlad starts moving back to Sylvania. There we go. Nice little campaign. And these guys can all go after Thorek. Thorgrim, damn it. <laughs> Okay, prepare for a lot of that throughout this campaign. Uh, because the Thorek uh, freaking campaign is still going, I'm just going to be confusing him and Thorgrim a lot. Uh, let's see, now, Vampire Corruption is good. So is Public Order. Income from Cities and Growth, though. But this only takes six, huh? That's kind of interesting, despite the fact that they're on the same level. This one doesn't take as long. 
Ah, uh, I feel like we are okay without the vampire corruption and stuff. I mean, it's good, don't get me wrong. But I'm perfectly fine having Isabella and Vlad in two separate armies just farming rebellions, getting themselves levels, and getting us money this entire time. Especially, yeah, th that works for me. And now, this is a boneyard, the growth building. What we could do is replace them. Oh, you can't get the gibbet uh, there at, uh, at a higher level. Ooh, what we can do, though, is you can upgrade your wall. No, you can't. You can upgrade Castle Drakenhof in, okay, 2513... Oh, the growth isn't complete. Okay, next turn. So we need to make sure that we have enough to upgrade that. Uh, let's not upgrade anything else then. Well, let's not upgrade anything else. Wait, did somebody get a public order thing? Let's see, you got a black cat. Okay, let's take that black cat away and let's give it to uh, your cousin. Uh, not to favor your cousin or anything. Uh, there we go. And, oh, what do you have? Melissa Rotep. the hell is Melissa Rotep? Oh, that's one of the vampires. <laughs> right, I was just like, wait, we don't have a lord. Uh, that's named Melissa Rata, but you can go into uh, uh, Katrina Von Drax's retinue there, because she's going to be sitting here for a while. Rotten, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Alrighty. Alrighty, I'm reasonably happy with all of that, and just want to make sure that we can't upgrade anything else. I guess that we can get here the charnel pit for the growth a little bit faster. It's not like we can afford any other... Uh, anything else, or it's not like we want to afford anything else here either. Yeah, I'm fine with all that. Alright, skip this and the turn. Few turns that are bare, that uh, we're not doing too much, but we are moving towards the Skaven, wherein we can get some nice battles. Ooh, Confederation between Barak, uh, Bar Var, and Karazakarak. That usually happens pretty early, so that's not surprising at all. I think it was a good idea to uh, leave the other... Leave the other orcs alive, but uh, destroy the dwarves here. And that, I think, is because we are going to essentially have them fight the uh, the main Karazakarak dwarves while we are relatively safe. Or at le and plus, on top of that, by destroying Zephbar and Karakadrin, those guys are unable to take care of those orcs. So we essentially made sure that Thorgrim is completely surrounded. Alrighty, what do we have here? Uh, any elite units? And so, you know, the Night Goblin's there. I mean, I'm, it's not an elite unit, but you know what I mean. Uh, do they have a catapult? Yes, they do. Bats, it's all you. It's all you. One bat, as we saw last time, does suffice for this job, so we can keep the other bats to uh, attack the walls. Uh, Lord, you sit back here, where you cannot get hit by anything, hopefully. And then you guys are all going to be the main defenders. Ooh, actually, no. We're going to use the three zombies here like... Like so. And use this zombie back here, like so. And then you guys are essentially going to act as reinforcements. We'll put one of you, let's say, here. And then the, the other one of you will attack. While the zombies take the damage, you will dish out the damage. Alright, that makes sense to me. And let's kill at least two of these things. Let's go for these night goblins here. Don't care about this one. So you are going to go after these night goblins, and you are going to go after these night goblins. What's in here? Regular goblins? Fine. Should be okay. Alright, now these two towers will go down, I take it. Bats, you have a job to do. Uh, go after those goblin rock lobbers. I do believe they once again do have some... Uh, uh, they once again do have some spider riders. But it shouldn't be that much of a problem. Plus, their other uh, boss is still very badly hurt. Oh, some of the bats went down. Oh, they're getting clipped by our own tower. <laughs> come on, tower. Do better. Oh, come on. How many bats did you kill here? <laughs> that hurts. That really, really hurts. I'm insulted on behalf of the bats. Alrighty, how are you? Okay, you're nearly dead. Let's see. Since you're gonna die, we're gonna switch you to this tower. Right there. Alright, don't bother attacking more towers. Go for the units. After this tower dies, switch to units, please. Like so, like so. Ooh, and if you can go after that lord, just because we're not gonna kill any of the other towers. Kill that lord, that'd be swell. Crippled their morale early. And let's see, 97%, I think you are dead. You guys go after that Lord, and you guys go after any units that it's full HP, but shoot somewhere where the tower won't interrupt you. All right, Orc Arrow Boy's down there. Let's make sure that they die. How are you doing back here? Oh, you're about to get charged, but it doesn't matter because uh, you've gotten away with killing that Goblin Rock Lobber. A uh, beautiful. A nice little siege. <laughs> I'm surprised both of these places have been managing to uh, to hold on, but pleasantly so. 
All right, doing damage to those uh, units, and here we go. These guys are all probably going to go through that gate. How's that Lord looking? Keep attacking the Lord. You switch to Lord. Don't let him. Don't let him up the ladders because it'll be harder to kill him there. Ah, you can't. You can't even hit him. All right, fine. Go for those arrow boys. Alrighty, Bats, you will have a job to do. In fact, go over here while you get ready to go up there and attack any units that are there. Uh, Rock Lobber's out of the picture, so you can come back and once again help out with this sort of stuff. Alrighty, I think uh, I think this one's pretty much in the bag. And how are you doing? Still alive. How much HP are you losing here? He only has 800. Ooh, he's gonna use some kind of magical attack. On somebody. Oh, do you sneaky stabbing? Yeah, you sneaky stabbing on the gobos. Makes sense to me. Uh, let's. We could send our lord up there. If their own lord goes up there, which he clearly has. Mm, all right. All right. You go here, and you guys go here. Attack this. There we go. There we go. Bats, get ready to come back in. And you bats, attack this. And oh, are you flying through our own towers again? Damn it. My bad. And then you guys, skeletons, help out. The Gabos versus skeletons. I gotta enjoy these uh, smaller battles while we can. I, I, I really tend to enjoy the early game battles uh, because late game battles become a lot faster in the sense that you get hyper elite units to just murder everything in a couple tur in a couple uh, minutes uh, rather than uh, taking their time. So yeah, this unit just route. Can't even tell what's going on anymore. Oh, did their army just route? I think their army just routed. <laughs> yeah, I think they're done. Alrighty, well, if they're done, let's just speed it up here. And... Oh, I probably should have sent bats to follow you. Yeah, definitely should have sent bats to follow you. Alrighty, well, you guys go ahead and follow that. Annoying. Ah, there we go. There we go, gonna speed it up to make sure that these guys get all as hurt as we can possibly make them. I don't know what the hell happened to their lord. Either he died somewhere, or he's still in here. Or maybe he's still stuck in the tower? Hmm. Huh. Oh, well, whatever. Speed it back up. And, oh, I thought I turned off uh, guard mode from all the bats. My bad, my bad. Keep killing these gobos, please. Can't be that hard. Are right, you done here? I think they're done. At least it's good enough. There we go, another heroic victory, but more importantly, more money. Yeah, these guys didn't even get hurt. Oh, wow. Uh, this place can sort of farm rebellions on its own. Which is kind of interesting, but I would have obviously preferred to have done that with uh, uh, Vlad or Isabella to get the XP. But it's all good. As long as the Empire hasn't attacked us, we're going to be happy. Ooh, although our Imperial administration will either already have worn off or it's about to. So we really need to go after those Skaven settlements. Uh, let's see, you, another 884. Very nice. So that'll be more walls to build up. Very nice. And you are quite dead. Move a character to the following province, Sterland. Uh, when they declare war on us, which is inevitable at this stage, ooh, it's going to minus 63. Yeah, if we don't get our, uh, uh, if we don't get the Imperial administration back up, that's gonna happen. I think Thorgrim's gonna die here. He's definitely, I think he can't move through Grom Peak. He's sort of stuck. He's stuck between this uh, ordinary backslider and Grom Peak. Maybe his army is tough enough to kill this army, though, because it is full of gobos. Weak, pathetic gobos. Alright, well, let's move you, Vlad, out here. Let's move Isabella to... Ooh, you know what we can do? We can go right here, and you can attack the rebellion. There we go, and we have cash now as well. Alright, ooh, most importantly, finally, Drakenhof gets its levels. Uh, you are going to attack right here. Kill that, please. Lovely. Decisive victory, no losses. Hopefully levels on at least one of you, and get that dark magic. Scroll of power, public order, and... Wait, wait, you got... Whoa, 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 who got the scroll of power? Did you get the scroll of power? You don't need a scroll of power. Although, ability recharge... No, that's probably useful on somebody else. Unless somebody else already has an arcane item. I think they both do, you. Uh, neither of you two do, though. Yeah, all right, fine. We'll give it to... Let's say we give it to Emmanuel Posner, because I do tend to use the Shadow Lore much more often. Oh, we have another Book of Arcan. And a Wanda Jet. I didn't even realize we had all these items. Oh, it's because of Vlad's item... Uh, item generation ability. Yeah, all right, you can have... Let's see, a hard choice. You know what? Have the Wand of Jet for now. 
And you have that Book of Arcan. All right, that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. Katrina, you're going to move back into Castle Drakenhof. We'll let this place rebel again when it's ready. Uh, although that'll damage it, but that's fine. And then we can level it up and when it has a high... And then when it has an actual garrison, it can protect itself. We can also gain money from it. Uh, how's the... How are you doing? I need six, eh? But you don't want a defensive alliance anymore. Alrighty, well, hopefully these two armies destroy themselves and we can capitalize on that, at least somewhat. Uh, Vlad, move in here. You, Isabel, stay near Castle Drakenhof. I'm worried that these Skaven might suddenly attack us. At least Schwarzhofen can now defend itself, so if we do attack the Skaven here, uh, then uh, Clan Ferric can't jump down and instantly take that away from us. Now, we have 5k remaining. Uh, Waldenhof, Waldenhof can't upgrade itself, and I think we can't build anything, so we're just gonna skip the rest of this. We're gonna end the turn, we're gonna proceed to Kragmere. Fight some Skaven. I'd love to have a nice cinematic battle with like a thousand Skaven on the field. In fact, I think since Vlad won't be able to move in this turn, what we'll do is... Oh, oh, it's a clan, clan Ferric hero, eh? War declared... Greybeard's Prospectors and Karazakrag? What the hell is going on over there? Uh... Trouble in paradise for the dwarfs there. Angry gods, growth, but loss of public order. Once again, early on, I don't give a damn about the public order loss, clearly, so, so be it. Let them ha let the gods be angry, but let us grow further. Uh, let's see, otherwise, no upgrades to make here, no upgrades to make here. Just gonna save that money for a little while. Oh, Vlad, you're gonna move in. Right there. And Isabella, I want you to identify what's in Kragmir. You're gonna have a turn of, uh, okay, no, no, don't declare war, don't declare war. Just wanna see what's here. Aha, a full stack full of Skaven slaves. Warlord Frisk, well, he's not gonna be so frisky after the, uh, after what's gonna happen next turn. Oh, this is gonna be fun. We're gonna make some zombies here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh, wait, can you recruit? Oh, no, you can't recruit, wait. Uh, you can recruit. Yeah, okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna... Oh, man, why do zombies cost so much to recruit? 480? That's a little bit much. I want to sacrifice the zombies for extra raised dead here. Most masterful of masters. Hmm. I mean, we could sacrifice Vlad's. I guess we're not really using our money on anything. But we need 5k for the tarnished gold mine. I'm just seeing if there's any other upgrades. You will be able to be upgraded in a turn. So we need another 4.7k, so if we use our money now, we won't have any. But, however, if we do fight this, uh, we'll probably gain a lot of dark magic out of that. Do you guys like us? No, not really. Not really. Not enough to make it worthwhile to keep you alive, that is. Uh... <laughs> Uh, just amusing myself. Ooh, we also have the uh, Konigstein Stalkers available. I'm not going to get them right now, but it is a... Uh, hmm. It's a fairly cheap unit for what it does. I am Vlad. And it's also cheaper to uh, get it into Vlad's army. 440-51 to raise the dead. And wait. 480-48... It's actually cheaper to raise dead than it is to recruit? Huh. Well, that's interesting. I did not know that. Uh, it doesn't feel like that should be the case. 480 for raise yes. dead. All right, wait. I'd rather 480 for recruit. 440 for raise dead. Okay, well, I guess we'll just have Vlad raise the dead next turn and then we'll attack. Beautiful. Uh, unassigned skill points we are going to skip for one more turn just in case everybody keeps uh, generating stuff. Ooh, we'll have you come in as well to leech that XP and help out, you know, with killing thousands upon thousands of rats. Hopefully they don't immediately move away, though. I've seen that happen and been very annoyed right when you're about to attack because the ai sometimes senses that you're about to attack on it when you mass on their borders and then they move away knowing that they are uh, in a bad situation uh, it looks like clan gritus is fighting oh clan ferric just got war declared on by karazakarak which is kind of interesting i take it thorgrim is dead somewhere out here unless he killed you oh yeah yeah he defeated you <laughs> i knew it i knew it and mount gunbat has walls now uh zuffbar is gonna rebel again but we're right here to deal with that as we are uh correct adrenal rebel as well but you know we've seen what it can do so i'm fine with that Alrighty, let's temporarily summon some zombies let's also upgrade ford oberstar so we can wall it up uh yeah and then waldenhof you are gonna need an upgrade after that so that we can wall you up and you can save your skill points so can you but let us level up the two vampires uh so you 
We're gonna save on the money because Hellsteed would in would just cost too much right now. You already have your arcane conduit. Is there anything here that we use constantly? To be honest, not so much compared to the uh, uh, to the shadows. Hmm. Also, got to get seduction of the Lamians on pretty much every vampire that exists. Uh, so, in fact, we probably want to get this immediately. And I take it these things don't wait. They don't lock each other, do they? So you can get multiples of them? Because all of these are pretty darn good. Actually makes me think that maybe we don't bother. Well, you know what? Let's get Renowned. But we might not necessarily want to move to the rest of the slime because we're kind of hurting for points. Let's get Renowned, Safeguard, and let us get, well, Wild Eyed. Or generally, I go for Impassioned over Wild Eyed. And, or whatever the other equivalents are because uh, you need the melee defense more. All right, so you're good. And then you, uh, you get Renowned as well because we have a lot of bats and other basic units. We don't want them to die here. Although that does make me think that maybe we want uh, not Great Warrior Warrior, but inspirational and soothsaying, in theory. I do, however, want to max out Pit of Shades, because I use this spell constantly. And let's get Safeguard. You guys are going to be a little bit different in the way that you level up. Alrighty, Vlad and Co., you save. You are at war with Thorgrim. Now, Thorgrim, would you like to possibly give us something for this? We will join war against Clan Ferric. You will give... What? 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 <laughs> Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Are you I was... I don't even know what to do here. Like, all the orcs are not going to appreciate this. And he's going to draw us into a bunch of wars, but I just find the concept extremely funny. And if he somehow survives, oh man, if we can get him to permanently like us. Wait, what if we do the gift of Okay, wait, no, I need to I need to think about this. Maybe we get our reputation with them up plus the vassalage and just keep buttering him up and just keep freaking Karaza Karak as our permanent vassal? I don't know if it's possible. Usually when I do things like this, vassals just leave. But I'm f I'm willing to try. Let's do it. Uh, let's also ask for some cash if he's willing. 800, 1300, 1800. Really? I, I suddenly love you, Thorgrim. Uh, will you do 2800? It's low now. Okay, let's, will you do 2300? No, okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Join war against Clan Ferric. Become vassal. Payments. Demand payment, 2000. <laughs> sure. Are you kidding me? I can't believe this happened. Okay, now you're reasonably happy with us. What we need to immediately do is get okay, now we're at war with Clan. <laughs> I was just not expecting this at all. Uh, we're gonna use another blood kiss on the dwarves right now. Night court. Uh, where's the dwarven symbol? That's you. Yes, yes. All right. What's the mission for this? The mission is kill two thousand enemies in battle. I think we can manage that. Let's do it. I'm just smiling ear to ear right now. Like, what the hell is going on? What is this game? Uh, let's see. You're gonna raise dead for zombies since we're about to get five thousand back. There we go, raise some cheap dead. Do we want to raise some skeletons and stuff? I mean, they're a little bit on the expensive side. Uh, but we do want more forces in this army. Plus, I'll provide extra dead. All right, fine. Fine, we'll power up the army a little bit. Oh, Vlad, get ready to attack Kragmir. <laughs> Gotta be freaking kidding me. Alrighty, close victory. Beautiful. We're gonna make this a cinematic battle. I love, love battles against the Skaven. They're some of the most fun battles in the game. Possibly the most fun battles in the game. Just watching hordes of Skaven, and now we're gonna be able to watch them clash with the hordes of undead. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, let's see, move you up and you're gonna leech some XP as well there, Katrina. Right there. It is night. It is indeed night. Uh, let's see. You are now going to start... Well, you have raised dead and you have Invocation of the Heck and the Hunger, so we're going to start moving through this blue line. Uh, you can get... What do we want through through the blue line? Let's see. Casualties captured, attrition suffered, upkeep for lords and heroes, hero action cost, hero recruitment cost, hero capacity for vampires, plus one. Yeah, I guess we'll go through this. I'll go through this line because I want uh, I wanted something here. I wanted I guess Necrarch and well, uncanny prescience. I guess 
Because you're going to be a defensive lord. So you don't need to be very powerful. Plus you really only need zombies after all, because you're a zombie power up or power upper. Not a word. You're a word. Alright, children of the night. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, freaking Karazakarak, man. Uh, you can go into channeling stance. Do you need leadership against Skaven? I don't think so. I think you'll be fine. And, oh, wait. I just want to check. Isabella, do you still have the leadership reduction? No, you don't. You're fine. So you're going to go into, I think, channeling stance as well. Oh, I could have put Vlad into Necromantic Ritual and reduced the cost of uh, Ray's Dead. I'm an idiot. Never forget that I'm an idiot. Alrighty, well, let's just go Vampiric Channeling then, I guess. I'm sure you'll be fine. Vlad, time for a nice cinematic battle in Kragmir. Do we want to summon these guys too? I mean, we're going to be fighting with the Skaven repeatedly now. We're going to raise our... No, we're going to sack this, then we're going to move to Krag, Krag Dromar, which clearly has a stack and a half. And we're going to do the same thing there and just keep farming them for rep and for other stuff. You know what, fine. Get the, uh, get the Stalkers in. I want to get a nice regiment of renown. Uh, it's going to definitely reduce our upkeep, but you know what? We're going to get the gold mine in hopefully next turn. Hopefully we now... I mean, 5,200, but then we get 5,000 back, so I think we're okay. Go. I'm talking too much. It's a, it's a problem. It's a serious problem. All right, let's go. Cinematic battle. Alrighty, here we go. Our first fight against the Skaven of uh, Clan Ferric, but the Skaven in general, a giant pile of clan rats and Skaven slaves with, I think, a few gutter runners uh, interspersed throughout. So that'll be, well, still probably ridiculously easy. Uh, I'm pretty sure our five vampires alone could easily destroy this entire force, so not really going to be a problem. So we're just going to move up here, and the goal is going to be to send up our zombies and allow them to die. The only problem problem there is that because the enemy is full of Skaven slaves uh, and clan rats, they also will have a fairly difficult time killing the zombies, or at least the Skaven slaves will. Uh, the clan the clan rats might be a little bit better at that sort of thing. And anyway, we're going to move in, send in our zombie tide to fight the vermin tide. Our uh, vampire is going to slowly saunter forward while the, uh, while the undead are run forward around them. Lovely. Alrighty, and because of the goal here being to allow the enemy to actually uh, do some casualties, uh, I'm going to keep our Vargeists and our Bats back, essentially, and just have them run around killing enemy uh, uh, enemy runners, essentially, so that they don't come back, because it is a settlement battle. Uh, well, I guess it doesn't really matter if they come back, but it's something for them to do. At the very least, while the zombies uh, just go to work, and I, to a degree, I guess we should probably keep the spearmen and the uh, and the uh, warriors back, but you know, all right, and we got our uh, regiment of renown warriors as well. There you go, Konigstein stalkers. What is your special ability, by the way? I keep forgetting what it is. Uh, is it just poison? I think it's just poison. Poison attacks, defender resilience. They got 40 melee defense, which is not too bad. Oh, and then the 70 armor uh, plus the uh, bronze shield as compared to uh, 20 armor and bronze shield. Yeah, so they're quite a bit tankier than we got over here. Oh, looks like our first zombie is going to get hit. Our doom rocket moving by. It looks like it hit that one zombie. <laughs> A zombie in particular. Oh uh, man, there looks like there's some splashback, and this guy lost his uh, this guy lost his head. But that was pretty funny that it didn't go right into the center, but just hit this guy right on. Uh, Already, and it looks like the gutter runners are gonna throw some of their shurikens at our uh, zombies. Don't really care, as that is our goal here. Ah, uh, I'm gonna be some lovely time watching clan rats and zombies clash, or scaven slaves and zombies clash. And let's see, we're running up here. What do we got here, by the way? Alrighty, they're still taking a while to get there. Ooh, and here comes another rocket. Let's see who this one hits. It looks like, ooh, this one collided where it should actually hit the uh, uh, Konigstein Stalkers, which I guess is a little bit more unfortunate. It, it did manage to kill, once again, one of them. Uh, otherwise, it didn't do all that much damage, but I do imagine that's partly because of the uh, fact that these guys have a lot more armor. They are Warpstone Scorched, though, so they do lose a little bit of armor and leadership, but I don't imagine that they'll be coming apart anytime soon. But a Warp Lightning cast coming down, but it looks like because our zombies were moving, the AI missed. And here we go. Zombies are about to collide with the enemy Skaven Blob. 
They are indeed everywhere. Alrighty, zombies and the rats. Ah. Uh, this is just very fun. Alrighty, and we're obviously keeping the, well, I want—I was about to say elite units. Uh, the skeleton warriors and stuff back a little bit, but they're going to move in and help out as well. But right behind the zombies, where the zombies will take the damage while our, uh, uh, while our skeleton warriors and spearmen quote-unquote dish out the damage. Obviously, they're not actual elite units and actually dish out much damage. We are, however, going to dish out some more damage via a pit of shades going right into the blob of Skaven here. A lovely explosion. Everybody goes flying before they get sucked right back in. Oh man, look at all these uh, these Skaven that are prone. I think some of them will try to get up, but a lot of them will die here. This is right in the middle of the blob. Now, this isn't probably super efficient because the Pit of Shades does... Uh, uh, it does armor piercing damage, and now that I think about it, maybe what I should have done is popped a purple son of Zareas uh, right through here instead. But it's fine. I mean, it's still it's still gonna clean up here. Like in terms of damage, it's still going to rout a bunch of these units. Oh wow, and it's causing a lot of lag. Yeah, my camp my computer can't really handle this. Damn, that's a little bit unfortunate. Oh man, yeah. I'm gonna need to think about some upgrades for game three, but uh, yeah, with the prices so inflated like right now, ah, it's gonna be a problem. All right, well, regardless, of these Skaven slaves looks like five enemies route. Obviously, that doesn't really affect the clan rats because uh, the uh, Skaven slaves are, I believe, uh, the expendable trait that the uh, clan rats do not. Ah, there we go. Alrighty, well, those guys are done for, and I do believe that there's a Warlord out here somewhere as well. Ah, yes, a uh, Warlord, and he is going to try to fight Isabella and Vlad. I separated the vampires, keeping Isabella and Vlad together, as I felt like they would fight, uh, well, together. And uh, meanwhile, the rest of the vampires are working. Ooh, that was a swing and a miss, although, damn, Vlad's attacks look pretty epic with that sword. Or maybe it was a feint to allow Isabella to strike, although I think she missed as well. Well, <laughs> uh, the couple that misses together stays together, I guess. And there we go. Oh, for a second, it looked like that zombie blocked, but uh, it looks like he did indeed uh, get hit. Alrighty, so these guys are fighting that lord out here. Uh, Vlad gets an actual kick in instead of uh, stabbing him with that magic glowing sword. This guy is, however, getting, uh, uh, getting pretty damaged. In the meantime, the other vampires are over here taking on the enemy warlock engineer. Now... This is mostly because the enemy heroes slash lords actually came forward to fight us. They probably shouldn't have done this, as considering their army is relatively, uh, well, relatively, their army is extremely weak by virtue of having pretty much nothing but clan rats and uh, skaven slaves. They shouldn't have done this as uh, it just exposes their uh, uh, their units. We're also going to be summoning dead a lot of the time, so uh, uh, lots of raised dead going on. There's one here, I believe we just did another couple over here by... Uh, uh, via both Vlad and Isabella, and man, look at the lag! And just because of this amount of units on the screen, ouch. It's unfortunate, but damn. <laughs> that looks really laggy. Uh, everybody's movements are just looking so bizarre because of that. Wait, maybe if we can just slow it back down and speed it back up, it'll fix itself? Sometimes it does. Huh, that actually does seem a little bit better. Interesting. It happens. Uh, alrighty, so obviously, once again, we're using the uh, doggos, the dire doggos, as well as all the uh, bats and big bats to uh, fight the enemy runners. Meanwhile, the rest of the army is fighting. Our zombies aren't actually dropping nearly as much as I would have liked them to. Uh, Vlad is also done with fighting the enemy lord. Isabel's going to chase him down and kill him while Vlad rejoins the uh, uh, the rest of the army. Although, now that I think about it, what I probably should have done was kept our heroes away from the battle lines completely. Ooh, a doom rocket coming in. Uh, from that, uh, uh, from that warlock that ran away, run away, and bad, the lag, the lag just came back. What the hell? Weird. Maybe it happens when I zoom in. Ooh, look at that warp lightning run right through those zombies, and I think it clipped some of their own units, or at least it might have. Oh, it brought down a blood knight. That was a uh, very nice use of warp lightning. Then, hell is up with you, lag? Come on now. There's not that many Skaven on the screen. How many, how, how many do we have here? Uh, there's only 5,000 less, pl plus, okay, fine. There's like uh, uh, 2.5k of our own units, so 8,000 units on the screen. Doesn't seem like that much. I swear I've had battles with more. Let's 
So, these battles are all really fun. Yeah, wait, now that I think about it, I'm 90% sure I've had battles with 10,000 uh, skeletons. Oh, the enemy lord gets uh, killed by Isabella. Uh, 10,000 skeletons uh, from the Tomb Kings in the Mazda Mundi campaign, but I guess our own army in that particular case would not have had as many units itself. Now, it looks like we're going to get another pit of shades going into this blob over here, and both of the enemy lords slash heroes have died. This was actually a mistake because it's actually causing a chain route here. Too many units are... Uh, it look like they're running away. Yeah, see, there you go. The entire army is now chain routing, and so I uh, I just send in the Var guys to finish everything up. If the entire army was going to chain route anyway, the Var guys might as well land and do a little bit of damage, have a little bit of fun, knock some Skaven around. Skaven bowling is, of course, one of their favorite pastimes. And there we go. The battle with that is just about over. Unfortunately, not enough of our zombies died. <laughs> It is what it is. But hey, at least we at least we had fun annihilating Skaven hordes. And man, it's, it's honestly kind of hard to tell because Clan Ferric's colors are very similar to Vlad's colors, and I guess the same would be true of uh, Moore's colors as well. Uh, so it's kind of hard to tell the, all the Skaven slaves apart from the zombies, especially at a slight distance. But otherwise, there we go. It says close victory, uh, but uh, we really only lost zombies and not nearly as many zombies as we want to, so uh, I personally don't count that to be a close victory whatsoever, especially as we didn't really even use our, uh, our elite units. But uh, let's see what the damage is in terms of casual Let's see if this gives us a better option for Ray's dead. Yeah, I, I absolutely overestimated how much leadership the uh, uh, the Skaven would have remaining once all their lords were dead because they just all plain routed. I was hoping that a lot more of our own zombies would die here, uh, but unfortunately that didn't happen. But oh well, it is what it is, and the one that did die uh, just rose again as well. Oh well, it is what it is. We're going to keep the Skaven alive for this purpose, so it's not like it's going to uh, uh, change matters too much, I hope. So yeah, uh, close victory. We are just going to sack the place. There we go. And that should be nice. We got a battle with a nice 7,000 casualties, but that is... What? Oh, that's not nearly enough, looks like. Really? 7,000 casualties is not... Oh, I guess you... No, you don't have to be in the settlement. Huh. Because it's just... A few more zombies. Okay, yeah, we need way, way more casualties, looks like. All right, let's try a little bit harder here at Karak Dromar by summoning even more uh, uh, even more zombies. And this time we can just send them in all to die. Ooh, Dwarf Spy, hello. Construction minus 20% time, cost minus 5. Uh, that's very nice. That's very, very nice because we need to construct a gold mine here. So what we'll do is, Isabella, you're going to... Well, you're all going to go here. At least temporarily. Right there, right there, and right... Ooh, but now that we're at war with them, we do have to be careful about uh, them attacking Zuffbar. Uh, we really do need to uh, max it out, i.e. Uh, get that level 2 upgrade. Alright, so you're gonna go here as well, Katrina. Uh, are you all good? Are you all too far from each other? What if they summon a lord and immediately attack Katrina? I think she can back off. Hopefully they didn't just screw that up. Let's in fact put Isabella right beside her, uh, just in case. I don't want to lose the vamp. And then uh, you are gonna stay here, but we are going to give you that dwarf spy. Uh, there we go. Reduce that construction time and cost on that gold mine next turn. Beautiful. And plus we have our vampire, uh, whose traits... Uh, whose trait is another construction cost reduction. Oh, speaking of traits, in the last episode in the comments, somebody asked me to uh, uh, go over the uh, uh, the changes to the bloodlines, which is one of the other changes that have been made in this particular version of SFO. And unfortunately, I can't do that because the way that they have changed is uh, that the bloodlines have gotten much more powerful traits. As you can see by this rotten trait, it looks like a pretty damn good early game trait. It makes zombies like twice as powerful as they were before. All the bloodlines have have uh, newer, more powerful traits is essentially the thing for all vampires, and I think that the Von Karsteins in particular have even more powerful traits for said bloodlines. So, uh, yeah, that'll be pretty interesting uh, as we unlock more and more bloodlines. Obviously, the goal for this campaign, other than, you know, uh, well, conquer as much, take in as many of the landmarks like Nagashazar and uh, uh, and the Black Pyramid and all that stuff, uh, it's also going to be to have at least one lord of each bloodline and the legendary lords, and absolutely the Red Duke, who... Uh, 
Deku. I like the Red Duke as well. Like, uh, uh, I think the only, uh, only one time have I ever uh, painted the map in its entirety. I there's only one time that I fully bothered. Although I will admit that a few campaigns I've gotten to the point that I've destroyed every faction and there were just a few like uh, a few settlements left but the entire map was in painting the one time I did that was with a was in a Red Duke of Musion campaign uh, so yeah I do like that lord as well plus it was a pretty interesting campaign anyway I digress once again uh, we're gonna end the turn but unfortunately I don't believe yeah we won't have enough time to fight this uh, second battle but at least that we can prepare ourselves for it by moving everybody near you're very close to level 12 as well which is gonna be lovely and you have leveled up, so let's keep getting you through, Children of the Night. Ooh, we just got an increase to vampire capacity, although we can't recruit them here. Uh, we will be able to... I don't remember what building allows you to recruit vampires. Oh, uh, looks like it's the... Wait, no, the, the Mausoleum of the Mad Camp is the special building. Oh, it's the... Uh, it's a vampire crypt building. Yeah, yeah, we gotta get vampire crypts everywhere anyway. So that's perfectly fine. Alrighty, and we should also get some necromancers just for the boost income uh, and steel tech. It, ugh, they do cost quite a bit, but early steel tech will be helpful as well. Plus, if we use it on factions that, uh, for example, uh, the dwarfs dislike, like Barak Var. Uh, well, not Barak Var. <laughs> like. The <laughs> like the bloody hands uh, that might uh, that might work out I really hope you guys stay alive now hopefully they don't lose Karazakarak please don't tell me we have to help them against Grimgore <laughs> this whole unexpected turn of events has just been just been very weird oh man watch the orcs now declare war on us because we're allied with the dwarves but hey we're going down to minus 26 now so it might be beneficial to start annoying the orcs but anyway let's end the turn I'm uh, gonna ignore that unassigned skill points we have a, a rebellion coming in at Zephbar, which is fine. We can always send Isabella by herself, but also I'm pretty sure it can just defend itself, as we've done so a number of times now. Hmm. Nah, yeah, well, alright, let's end the turn. Let's end the turn, let's build that golden... Oh, it's an Escaven invasion this time, instead of an Orky invasion. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Eh. I'm sure it's fine. Free XP and all that. Ooh, and now it looks like Avalan is fighting Clan Track. Ah, you probably didn't like that stuff. They have ended their non-aggression pact. You looks like we're going to have to destroy the Bloody Spears and most likely uh, the uh, the Red Eye as well. Hopefully the Bone Rattlers we can keep on our side though, uh, presuming that they do okay. Plus they're not down here, although all the Orcs will really dislike us for vassalizing the Dwarfs. Uh, but you know what? This is part of the whole emergent storytelling thing uh, that I really love about, uh, well, this game in particular, but uh, uh, many games in general. Like, this was completely unexpected. Oh, and you're about to rebel as well, aren't you? Correct, Kadrin. Hmm. Okie dokie. Now the question is, do we have to attack you? Ooh, some rad ogres. But you are suffering attrition. Wait, do we have enough vampire corruption here? No, we don't. You're suffering attrition because you're in a... Why are you suffering attrition? You're not in vampire territory. Oh, just because it belongs to us, not even because of the attrition? Uh, not corruption, rather? Huh, that's kind of interesting. I thought that it had to be over 50% corruption or something. Huh, guess not. I uh, guess not, Vladdy Daddy. Let's move you up to Karak Dromar, at least as close as you can get, so that we can attack an next turn. If they want to attack us in the field, I'd be perfectly willing to. Uh, let's also build this gold mine with the reduction. Like so, 400, honestly the reduction wasn't that much, but at least it'll get completed much sooner. Uh, we will also, okay, well, I mean, they're not going to be able to take this place, so. What else do we need to build here immediately? Uh, this, this is a raised dead building, isn't it? Raised dead cost minus 20%, yeah. Well, if we can get one of these Skaven territories with a lot of uh, raised dead, then that'll be nice. I uh, can't build the Muslim of Red Count until, Mad Count, until the, uh, until the fourth tier, so that's gonna take a while. We should probably get Balefire Braziers everywhere, but for now let's build another Blood Tax, which will come up a lot sooner as well. And I guess another Gibbet. Uh, like, there's absolutely military buildings that we can build, but generally speaking, uh, Sylvania generates so much cash that you're better off just maximizing the amount of cash that it generates and making the uh, uh, making Castle Templehof the more military hub focused area. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. Start with a gibbet uh, and or gibbet rather, and then uh, move. And do we need a lich yard here? It will give us the ability to get a necromancer and boost our income further. But I feel like if we save the money, 
like, yeah, our, our growth is at 144 now, so we can build more shady townships very soon. And Fort Oberstar is going to need the money. Yeah, okay, it's fine. Yeah, the only question is, do we bother to send Isabella here and kill that rebellion immediately? Or, wait. Hmm. I mean, I feel like Vlad can take the... Oh, yeah, there's definitely two stacks in there, but I still feel like Vlad might be able to take it on his own. I just wanted to leech the XP with Isabella. That's the thing. We could always just have him raid here for a while, and if they attack him in the field, they'll die. Because here's what I wanted to do. What if we have Isabella move in right here? And then, wait, will you still have it? Yeah, you'll still have enough movement space. Then we send you, Katrina, to rip apart Kragmir again. Auto resolve. And then we sack it. Yet again. Then you aren't going to go... Well, I guess you can leech XP, or you can follow Vlad. You can go back into March Dance now, in fact. Hmm. And you can go into Schwarzhofen if you really want to, because you won't be close enough to Vlad, unfortunately. Alright, you know what? Well, regardless, you're going to attack this little uh, force here. And just for the XP. And then we're going to take the money, I guess. There we go, more money. This This is going reasonably well. Everything's gonna go ter terrible at some point, I just know it. <laughs> Alrighty, and now that you've done that, uh, unfortunately you can't go back into March Stance, but you can go back into your own territory. We could also send you up to Karak Kadrin to keep destroying rebellions if we want. The, f the only problem is that you have all of our vampires in your army. Uh, and Vlad's out here all alone. He's feeling very lonely. Anyway, oh, we can get the tithe now, and the dire pack. Well, the Dire Pack should go into Isabella's army, and, well, the Tithe can go into this army. Actually, no, the Tithe should absolutely go into the, uh, into Katrina's army, because she powers them up considerably. And 116 is not too bad, we definitely don't need them this turn anyway. Uh, I believe with that, we are out of time, so I am going to have to call this episode here. Uh, it's been a pretty interesting one with the vassalization of the dwarfs. Uh, I would love to... I would love to fix our relationship with them before... Uh, wait, actually. We have the... Uh, wait, obedience to vampires, public order up to plus 10 based on person. Yeah, that's corruption. Fine metalwork. Nine turns. We need to keep this up for as long as possible. And angry gods... Oh, we still haven't managed to do the uh, smoke on the horizon, so we really need to sack Karak Dromar to make the Imperials uh, like us a little bit more. Although I imagine they will like us for treating with the dwarfs as well. Actually, they don't. Huh, weird. Oh, weird. Well, hopefully we can force the dwarfs to fight them for us as well. Because uh, they'd have to... Oh, because here's what's going to happen. They will attack us. And by they, I mean the... Uh, by Averland or uh, one of the other Imperials. They will attack us... Dwarfs will be given an option to join us or declare war. They will declare war instead and break vassalage. That's generally what happens unless we get our reputation with them up a lot really quickly. Then they don't appreciate our military actions against Karak and Drin. Uh, maybe we'll start giving them small gifts as well, like a thousand. It's not too bad. We do have the money right now. But and maybe that'll help them as well. Alright, so gifts given will now be giving you a five. And uh, soon we'll get more reputation up with them via various other means, like uh, leveling up our vamps. Alrighty, well, let's get to that. Oh, in fact, you. Oh, they do lock each other. Okay, damn. So you, Melissa Rotep, you're confident. So will you be a fighter? And do we need to level this? Because we know that you, Emmanuel Posner, will eventually not be a fighter. We're going to switch you. Uh, even though you're high level, you're a lore keeper. So you will absolutely be uh, supporting us. Which means, therefore, I think we get you the uh, Seduction of the Lawmans. Oh, but it does give post-battle a chance of stealing a magic item. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. I mean, you'll still be a decent fighter even without getting good stuff like like the uh, martial prowess and stuff. And technically, if you're going to follow an army, you're probably better off getting the subtlety, apparently, of the Strigoi. Uh, but no, we're going to get Seduction of the Lamians for extra dipl diplomatic relations. So let's do that for you, at least, Emmanuel. And then we'll figure the rest out. And also, why do you have the carrion? Let's give that directly to either Isabella, or for now we'll give it to Vlad, because he's the one carrying the uh, the bigger army. Uh, where is that? You don't need a restless spirit, you can take the carrion. 
And I believe we're good. Alrighty, well with that, as I said, I am going to call it here. Next time we attack yet again the Skaven. It looks like they'll have the Garrison stack, plus a full stack, plus another stack here. So it should be a little bit more of a fun army. And this time, I'll try to send the zombies to uh, take a little bit longer to die. Uh, like, let them all die, essentially, before. And just to increase the casualty count, before attacking with the rest of our army. And then we might we might wait for Isabella to get here as well, just to add the vampires. Although I still feel like we won't need it. I'll think about that. Either way, we'll have to wait till next time, and we'll see what happens with the dwarven vassalage as well. So with that said, as always, I do appreciate any and all feedback with regards to the gameplay or the way I do things on this channel. Don't forget to leave a like and comment for a friendly neighborhood heretic. All glory to the algorithm, and thanks for watching.